try pressing something on the mic. Can you hear us now? Right, let me know if you can hear me now. Yeah, thumbs up. I know it's a bit of a delay, so give us a give us a um, happy face if you can hear me. Well, and that'll probably be really happy friendly face for being more appropriate. Give us a rest. So can you hear me? There's a button on the right there. Yeah, great. So are we getting any response there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I think we've got thumbs up now. Yay, can you hear Maria? Go, Maria. Give us a tune. Speak. Give us a tune. Well, no, just speak instead. Sorry. Monday, speak. Monday. Is it Monday? Oh, it is Monday. She's appropriate. I love that day. Yeah, she's just going to have lyrics, right? But she's trying. Can you hear Maria as well? Because we really want to chip in because she's going to ask questions and she's looking at that as well. She's got a console of kit around that. So... Fabulous, we are almost ready to go, so I'm going to crack on. So thank you for joining us. We have people, first of all, most of them have responses. Go we do. So I've got pick and flick. I've got amazing, amazing samples here. And you know, the photography's good. They're, they're amazing. The team, they're just amazing at everything. But they do take lovely pictures. But I think when you see them on camera, you get them. You get the 3D element, you can get more kind of idea of what they actually look like. Because you always look best in the flesh or in the card. So, um, if you've got any questions, shout up. Um, Maria's going to try and look on the screen at that as well, as well as switching buttons around, because we're using a switch, I think, because we've got the face on camera, and we've got the overhead camera, and I'm going to show you the samples on the overhead camera, much as I do on the telly. Um, any questions, just shout up, and we will continue. I got a question, Maria. Uh, I do, and my question is going out to Kath mm -hmm. Gorton. Right. Kath, can you just tell me, can you hear me clearer, or can you hear Sheena clearer? Yeah, that would be great, because it depends on what we this mic set up. Mm. I know you can hear us both, but I'm wondering who's clearer, because I was clearer last week. And um, if we're both talking about the same level, this is me talking, yeah, and... This is me talking God here. That is Maria talking. <laughs> me and Will are cool. You have no idea. Kath Gorton, are you there? Anybody or anybody, can you hear which one of us is louder or are we both about the same? Just, just we're trying to work this out so we get the best for you. Lovely lot. Um, anybody want to chip in? Just say Maria, Sheena, C. That's all. Maria, Sheena, C. And you know when you go back and you read it through the comments after the thing, I try to scroll through and so there's yeah, it's chatty as we are. So it takes ages to look through. Okay, Kath says she can hear me clearer, so I think it's still that, coming that, out right? of this mic. Right, well I'm gonna talk louder until we get this thing sorted out because we need to look at the technical thing. It was easy to plug in the form that's going into a mic into the iPad into a USB C if anybody knows about that, via a converter, and it's just yeah. I'm going to talk louder. Back to nice things like carding. Back to Shall we look at the overhead then? Shall we do that? Look, like on the telly, look where I am. Is that perfectly centred? It is. Yeah. First card here. Beautiful. Um, can I even show you, what, show you what the things are? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, let's do that before we do the cards. Let me show you what you get. I was going to do boards. I've got everything to do boards with. But then I thought, you know what? You do the boards and... You can't really see them that well on this camera anyway, so I'm just be they're gonna be too big. And you can see the dies. So it's based around two shaped frames. There's a square and an oval on each set. And this one's very twiggy, very organic. It's a base frame. It's not it's not all flourishy, fancy, all this stuff. It's a worker frame. It's something that will frame all of the, the stamps that you've been collecting. You know, my nature stamps, me, me, me floral stamps that all the stuff that is themed like we usually bring to you. And so that's the oval, and it actually has shaped it on the same oval as you know, the tattered lace oval. So if you want to layer them, I'm thinking that should be the same kind of thing there. Oh, there's a switch on that mic. Mm -hmm. that. I don't know. Stand by. Trying. Right, you might hear uh, me. And then we've got also got. Is that in the shot there, Maria? I don't know if this makes any difference. Yes, it is in the shot. Yes. Right, thank you. Um, same kind of thing, twiggy, viney. This one's got a little, um, like, as if it's a rose, twisted thorn um, border. You'll see when you see the samples what they look like. Lots of flowers, different shaped flowers, different shaped flower heads. That's very pretty. 
very, very spring-like and lovely. And then the other set, um, switch them around there so you've got the um, the larger thing there. Totally geometric, lots of squares making up the frame. So something a bit bolder, could be more masculine, just a little bit more contemporary looking, but still work with all those nature things. And three great um, pine trees, we're talking to work all year round. The ferns are work at eye, this little florals are work at eye. And then you can see you've got your oval, and as this, so this one's squares, and this one's all circles, little squished circles all joined together to make a frame shape. Uh, feathers and the birdie. So that's there. You're getting all those dyes and you're getting these massive words. These are, I mean, I, you know, usually do large words, yeah, but these are great. These are like wall art. You know, you have that great statement, wall art. I mean, you just even do that and put it in the frame and make a pretty background and it's a great gift for people. I think quite sellable, quite marketable, and that's fine. Just do that. Um, so big, bold statements here like two friends all start strangers but emerges family a friend doesn't count your flaws they love you because of them that's feel good for me life is not an obstacle to get over it's an adventure to explore very adventure looking like corroded kind of um font there fonts are so important when you're doing these things to give someone a smile costs nothing yet has unmeasurable value so true Life's challenges are brief, become our triumphs. And be it a blessing or a lesson, you're always right where you should be. Words of wisdom there. This is the most sensible thing you'll ever see. seen. Or certainly, probably for the rest of the night. So that's the set. This is what the cards look like. So back into there. We're still on that overhead. Uh, this is, you can see how this has come together. Debbie's created like a four um, bleach uh, wood background. Super cool. We'll have to ask maybe she can do a little um, tutorial on um, the inkets uh, and see if we can see how she's done that. Or give us an explanation. And actually, she has used one of the tattered lace dies underneath to frame that one to, to sit that on top, you know, the nesting ovals. I thought that was uh, made sense to me that the same kind of because ovals can be squished, it can be fatter, they can be longer. And I wanted to have them the same kind of proportion as them. Uh, the flowers, you can see how they all come together depending on how you want to colour them in. All good. The, um, this is another, another really pretty one, and this is Sharon. It doesn't have to be massive, so you can make them smaller. That was the idea with the two size frame. Again, with the little pretty florals and water, very watercolour-y. Debbie's focused on the little bluebells there. Isn't that lovely? It's like, a, like a, a magical midnight garden. I could be frolicking there. Lovely. Um, love this. This is so cool. There's that different frame. Look, so cool. Modern bold but still with a pretty kind of um graphic very country look and that you could sing in a frame absolutely in a box frame would look fantastic and this is oh it's a mystery card man oh sometimes they put the stickers on the back and they fall off but it's amazing from somebody very talented on the team they're all very talented talented just saying um i think this is lisa's love this so she's used the um, a butterfly from a previous uh, set but look at inking background, just really make good, quick cards look really cool without too much effort with these ones. Uh, Debbie's gone very gothic. Quote the Raven. Very Edgar Allan Poe. Deborah Durant. Bit mysterious and dark. Bit like Deborah herself. Hey, well, that's that one. Fabulous, isn't it? And then, love this. Love this stripy background with the flowers. I like that that kind of modern graphic bold combination against the, and you can see all the feathers come in, the florals, depending on how you want to colour them. I'm going to go through that tonight with you. I'm going to do some colouring and have fun with that. Cool. Look at these. Look, how cool. fabulous for, you see how they're taking the old brand all year and you know if you've got the USBs, the idea was that you can print your USBs, you can do your composition and all this stuff will complement the USBs. That was the initial thought in my head because there's so many images on that, on those USBs all the stamps, the collections that you've collected, that this really will set them off and bring the 3D element that you may not have, um, unless you've got the scan input. So fabulous, this is gorgeous. And this is Lisa. Yes, oh, look at that. Um, Debbie, Deborah again, very uh, wintry, but I love that glow in the sky. Our fantastic mystery card was Amanda's. Was it Amanda's? Yeah. Oh, I bet it was Tommy. She laughs at me because she does make charming cards. Amanda used to work in a children's to speak uh, in a 
children's books. She's worked in the bookshop and took care of the children's book section. And I think they just look like illustrations of books I would buy. Love them. Love I love the charming. She books. Very charming. It is charming. Um, but fabulous. Love this. Love the bold daisy. So look, hardly any colouring on there, but look at them. It's a full colour background. Are we liking these guys? This one is Adele's. Nice one, Adele. Back and going for it. Love this. Look at the brushes on the background. Wow. But it's how pretty, from delicate and pretty to more kind of country style. That was Lisa's because her little tags just spun off the back for Lisa. And this one is Amanda's as well. I'm sure it's Amanda's. She's used a little bit. You could use some salt technique in the foreground to maybe use that. I feel like I'm um, DCI Vera Standard Pet. Uh, a bit of card forensics going on here. And um, you can see that she's used a, a watercolour. I would say a bit of fall bleaching. Could be salt in the foreground, I'm thinking. Fabulous. <laughs> That'll be a phone call for Maria. Mom and Dad. I love the way she announces it. Yeah. Did it? Does it? We still got the camera. We still got the camera. Is it? Yeah, you still got the camera on. Yeah, great. Okay. We forgot to tell them we're doing it. Face. No, I didn't. Yeah. What? No, I didn't I forget to tell them. Oh, you did tell no, them. No, I did tell them. Yeah, so I oh, hope they're okay. Uh oh. Okay. Hopefully. Um. Well, it's a call back, guys. We may have to. You know, they're in their eighties and and wear it, taking care of them. So I know you know how that goes. Maddie, I can see Maddie Cooper's on yeah. on with us. Could you yes. give her a call, Maddie, on your landline and just ask her not to ring my, my mobile? And, and if she's okay, and make sure that she's okay it's for us. Life, isn't it? Thank you. you know, this is not like a proper telly thing. This is real life. This is the dining room. Yay! Yeah. So um, continuing here. And um, you can, I love this, how tropical. Oh, in my head, I'm here frequently, Maria, look at that. I love the way Debbie's got these, look, look like waves. But you know, it, that's the highlight kit. If you haven't got that yet, the highlight kit is, this, it, kit is the answer to your success. And I've checked, they're still in stock. Lots of stuff is out of stock, unfortunately, because of the situation with, uh, you know, with COVID and getting stuff through. But um, I know they're still... Highlighter kit in stock and the technique brushes are still in stock. Technique brushes here and here. Um, so love that. Fabulous. Just in colour the bird and like a tropical parrot type thing. Um, very nice. Look at that. Heavenly. Beautiful with the feathers. Um, I hope you can see how useful this set is. I didn't want it to be just of a one look. I wanted to have um, a, not a massive set but that was multifunctional if that makes sense Adele again has used previous stamps here I love the little blue bells turned out this little jig type stuff here and then um, just for now there's this fabulous one by uh, I think it's Pam's where she's used the USB the image from the um, Define the Line um, first uh, card collection and then brought the, the um, 3D elements into it and give it that great look Merging the two. So fabulous. That's hopefully given you um, an idea of some inspiration that you can do with it. Are you liking that? Are we liking that? Are we getting any response? A little head, thumbs up or anything like that? would be lovely. Yes, yeah, got some hearts. Great. Are we back on the, the facey camera now? Um, Are we still on the overhead? Sure. There she She's coming. There's quite a big delay on this. Is there? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, right, I was going to have a drink, but I won't. So what I thought we'd focus on, I've got cards prepared for tomorrow's shows, and I have this card prepared for tonight, and I've put it on that, but I'm going to take this out because all the bits are going to fall out. But this, very charming, this is. This is Amanda's again. She's going to be laughing at me. I know you will. Can we say that in the, in the shot there? Yes. Um, but I just think it's, it's lovely. So it's using a small oval frame. But it shows off the flowers really well. And this was the idea, have it partly over the frame. So the frame's like a foundation. And then you peg onto it what you want to peg onto it. In this case, it's the florals. So I have got coloured in florals aplenty in here. Let me show you. Um, lots and lots of them. So what I'm, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I got there. I'm going to show you the longer way to colour them and then the quick way to colour them. So do you want to go back on the overhead, Maria, if you want? Sure. Thank you. Could you just send a, a hug out to Susan Clamp for us? I will. I will. Send in your virtual hug, Susan. Thank you. So, yeah. Right, so let me show you what these look like. So when you see them uncoloured, look, from that to that, 
Look at the difference from, I mean, I've got so many different shaped leaves. Look at that. I wanted this one to look autumnal. And then we've got these other little kind of rose type um, leaves. We've got this, I love this gorgeous bluebell. Look at that. Look at the colour on them. So this is down to what colour and medium you're using. And this is really important. Now, as I'm putting these out, I'm going to talk at you about this colour and mediums. The, um, you know, normally, you know, I've been liking mixing it up using my colour pencils. We love the colour pencils with, um, you know, with craft cord and things. Loving that look. However, because these don't have a stamp and you're just going to cut them, you're going to die cut them, then colour them, you would you to use coloured pencils would be quite a challenge. Um, because colouring with pencils, when you've already got these ridges of the detail in the die cut, obviously the detail is in the, the marks within the die, that gives them context. So when you're trying to colour in with a pencil over these areas, you they're going to be catching in those ridges, you're going to not be able to get into the nooks and crannies. It's going to be much more difficult a task than if you use a wet product. So basically, um, a water watercolour, something like that. It could be watercolour markers, it could be watercolour pencils, but actually watercolour paints, I find, are absolutely the best way to do instead of the way to go with this. And I'm going to show you why and how. It could be your ink pads as well. If you haven't got watercolour paints, I'm trying to mix it up with things. You obviously, I concentrate. I'm trying to mix it up with things that... We, you'll have, you're going to have um, in your kit, in your crafting kit, not quirky, unique things that, you know, it's like, well, I've got them. Where do I get them? Well, it's watercolours, guys. So as long as they're a decent quality watercolour. And what makes a good quality watercolour is the intensity, first of all, the amount of pigment as opposed to fillers. Let me show you my tiny little kit here. I did all of these, all of them. Um, keep watching. I'm... Um, all the time behind the scenes, you know, I'm expanding with different pencil sets for you because you can go super expensive and super inexpensive. But some of the inexpensive ones I've been looking at lately have been very quirky, so I'm not going to recommend them to you. I'm trying to find something in the middle that's a good value, and that's what I'm doing with watercolors too for you. Maria has a question. No, it's not a question, it's a, a remark. Tash, Pat, and Liz have yeah. just bought them all. You're kidding. No. All right, well, thank you so much. You didn't hang around. Well, it's, you know, I'm not being funny, but considering there's supposed to be two shows again tomorrow, for the past three, four, there's only been, definitely three, there's been one, hasn't that? Because, you know, we, we've called down to extend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the minute, it's just we can't do that. Two, two, and that's maybe. down to you guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. So what I was saying was about the watercolours. Right, look at all those colours. Look at that wealth of colour. This is what I've got here. You don't need a million and one. You really don't. In fact, if you've got too many, it can be a bad thing. Absolutely what you want to do is make a little colour swatch. This is this is my colour swatch. It ain't pretty, but it's workable. And these, believe it or not, are tidy and clean. I know Diane Fisher, you will be mocking me at how pathetically clean these watercolours are. But I'm just saying this is my new little travel kit. Just to say, this is there's what? Two, four, six, eight, ten. There's twelve colours here. And I'll tell you why I base this set around these 12 colours. You know, your primary colours. Now, this is the thing, and Maria has such an amazing career behind her, but nothing to do with my kind of arty career. Amazing in a whole different other way, which you probably know if you've, if you've been looking at, you know, the, the, um, the Facebook page and reading bios on the team. Um, so she didn't know when you said primary colours. People think, primary colours? What's primary colours? What's that? What? You think, you know, is it green a primary colour? I'm sure I would know. You've only got three of them, and they're red, blue, and yellow. Now, you also get warm and cool primary colours, and I've, I'm, I'm just trying to... I won't get a chance to talk about all this on the telly, and this won't be anything I'll be talking about then, which is what the Facebook Lives are about. I'm going to concentrate on colouring with watercolours tonight for you. So in here, even though it's got a bit of blue on it, let me get a, let me get a brush. Hello to Georgina Hay. And if you get messed up with your watercolours, if that happens, you see that's happened there, I'm going to just wet it. I'm going to get a bit of my kitchen paper and I'm going to do that. And these look like what we call pans. They look like the solid watercolours, yeah, that you would buy in a set. But they actually weren't. These ones are in tubes. And I'll be talking to you about that further down the line and we'll be coming back to that when I let you know about ones I've been trying out for you and things like that. But what happens is when these tubes dry, they, they go solid. 
or just leave them like open to the air and then you can top them up as well but there's tons of paint in these um so can you say this by warm and cool imagine this is a lemon it's got a lot of um like a um it's well, and this one's a, a gold. Gold is obviously warm. You can say this is cooler and warmer. Does that make sense to you? With the reds, I've got a warm red. By that, it looks like it's orangey, vibrant uh, red. And then we've got like a, a rose, which is a cooler rose, a cooler red. And so is the um, alizarin crimson down here. So you want at least a warm and a cool red. Does this make sense to you, Does this help Absolutely. And the same with the blues, funnily enough. But this is here is a marine's a very cool blue. It looks like it's got a bluey kind of a greeny tint to it. And so when you what this means, when you're mixing your colours, you know sometimes if you mix a you know that purple, right? If you don't, I'll tell you now, is a pink and a uh, sorry, a red and a blue. Now if you're using the wrong kind of reds and wrong kinds of blues, you're going to get a mucky, dirty purple. So by that, you see this one here, this scarlet orangey red. If I mix that with that greeny blue, it's going to be much more murky and dirty than if I mix maybe ultramarine and this rose. I'll get a vibrant. I'll show you that in a minute, just so you can see. So that's what I'm saying. That's how you decide about a good watercolour set. And if it's doing your head, you think, ah. Oh, don't worry, I'll put these things together for you and we'll sort you out. But just this all of the background and the reason I tell you, you know, I try to share with you. I, I, I like to know why. And I like to say, this is a good set of watercolour. Why is it a good set? Why have you chosen that? That's why. I've only got one green because, as we know, any of those yellows and any of those blues will make a plethora of greens. But for convenience, I've got a nice sap green in there. I've got two browns. If you keep mixing and mixing, the bet you've been there, you'll get brown. And then I've got this, um, this one is called a neutral tint. It, it could be um, Payne's Grey is another um, um, well-known dark, dark grey, almost black. Black's a little severe, but grey. So that's my watercolour set. Let me show you just what I was talking about, those mixing of those colours. Are we good, Maria? We're very good. All right, is, is this helping? Give me a thumbs up if this helps you. Right, let me show you that muddy purple, all right? I've got that orangey colour there, and I've got that greeny blue here, and I'm going to mix it in. Oh, where's the purple there? Hello, isn't red and blue supposed to make purple, Maria? Mm -hmm. So you tell me. <laughs> Look, because it's a very orangey red, you know what? And that's a bluey, a greeny blue. Oh, I'm trying to keep it simple. I feel like Julie Andrews. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. There we go. Didn't take much. So, even if I put a bit more red in there, look, what we got now. Still, ugh, neutral, very, very muted. So I can't make the best of this. I'm not, I can't fix it. Look, I'm not fixing it. That's a great shadow colour. However, I'll, if I was me, which I am me, hello, I would mark down great shadow colour. That's me, payroll scarlet, I think it is. Payroll scarlet, something like that. I've got shortened it down. And um, my marine blue. Um, and it makes a lovely shadow colour, great neutral grey, but a terrible purple. Right, let me show you the difference here. So if I use this blue that is a good blue and a good pink, red, pinky red, I'm going to use this. There, look, pinky pink, lovely. Can you see that on the screen? Mm -hmm. Right. And then I'm going to use this blue here, ultramarine. I'm going to use a bit of that ultramarine. I'm going to mix that in and straight away, whoo, hang on, I'm getting there. A bit more blue and it'll go more purpley again. See, look at the difference. If I want it a bit more bluey, less purpley, all you're doing is changing the proportion of one to the other, but look at the difference. That's why sometimes when you're mixing colours, you go, hang on, I'm doing the right thing. That's why, lovelies, you need a warm and a cool of each colour. Um, I, I definitely, definitely think there's more, if you want more colouring stuff like this on Facebook, because it's gonna help you if we do more little little demonstrations like this for you on Facebook, and um, let me know, because this is I'm just doing stuff, I think, but I, I actually think this is, you think you're doing everything right, but it's still not going right. And and that's why. So let me know if that's useful to you. Now, having said that, 
I'm going to wipe that up. Shall we do a bit of colouring? Let me show you how I've coloured a few of these bits in. Yeah. Let's start with one of these bluebells. So, just say hello to a few people. Yeah, yeah. I will. take breath. Absolutely. Um, hi to Elizabeth and Tammy. Hello, Tammy. Elizabeth. And Leslie Lee. Leslie Lee. Leslie Lee. Cool. Yeah. And Teresa Styles. Teresa, evening. And Dorothy Brown. Dorothy. Dominique Feeney. Dominique Feeney. Rachel Price. Who? Rachel Price. Rachel Price, even Rachel. And Maureen Shaw, to mention just a few. Just a few. Cheers all for tuning in. Right, so we've got the bluebells here. This is the bluebell colour. Let me bring this little bit of card in there. From that to that, okay? And I'm going to show you how I did it. All right, so pop that there. I'm going to use a couple of blues. I started off with a bit of marine blue, that, that greeny kind of blue there. And I'm going to take a little bit out. And what I've done with any of your watercolours, pop a little bit of water on them and leave them for a couple few minutes. And um, it just softens the paints and you get loads of colour there. And don't use it directly out of the, the little um, bits, the little pans, the, the little containers, because it'll be too strong. You'll be painting with like a thick, gluey, gloopy thing. So take some paint out and then work from that. So we've got two blues there. That's lovely. Tons of colour. Thank you very much, Dr. Oh, that's nice. It's like a teal colour, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do to make things easier is I'm wetting these little bluebells. And this is, by the way, cards massively important. If you're going to use pens, you use something like a, a pen, a card for your pens. Actually, white willow works great. It's not in stock, unfortunately, love these at the minute. But that would work with your pens too. But... If they're using a water-based product, you absolutely want willow card, the white willow, or the watercolour card. And um, that's then going to let you do things uh, well and properly. It's going to not um, grab the colour. It's going to be thick enough to handle the colour without warping or pilling. You know, the surface isn't going to come off. And... Um, it's all this mat it's huge, huge matters a massive amount of the cord. So I've just popped that on there. Now when that's still wet, I'm taking this darker blue. And you know what the good thing is about these dyes is you see those little channels there. If you pop the colour at the base, those channels start to wick the colour through those little lines, and it looks like you've actually um You've actually painted the detailing and all that's happening is they're working like your little capillary action. Oh, hello. Get you with your capillaries. I know. <laughs> and so because it's wet, you'll find that the colour's diluting a little bit. But if we want, you can do this firstly and see how you're getting on. And then if you think, oh, I'd like that a bit darker, we can go over again and pop a little bit darker and more intense colour on it. So... See, so just dot it on there, dot it at the base, and then you get a nice natural. Just you don't have to, you don't have to do too much to it to, to have it looking cool. If I want that to, like I say, look more intense, I can let it dry. If I put less water on the base, it wouldn't. It would be more intense. Now I'm gonna uh, take a little bit of green, and I'm just gonna go over this whole thing here. Now, see the benefit of using a brush and a wet product. Because you're going to get this covered so much quicker than if you try a pencil or anything like that. It's just not, it's the right tool, right medium for the right job. So that there, very, very bright, we'll take that down a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of this brown into that, make it a little bit more woody. Um, another thing you can do with greens, if you want to take the colour down a bit, is to add a bit of red. Because that's the opposite colour on the colour wheel and it'll make brown eventually. So it's getting us that balance of that crazy colour we did at the start. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this and then we're going to um, continue with it. Could do with me. I'm just going to lift that up for a sec. Now, bear in mind when this is wet, if you've got a lot of water on it, it's going to be a bit delicate, all right? Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. I've got that torn it. So just be careful when you're moving it. I'll just move that there because if I'm drying that, it's going to take ages to dry it. Another thing is get yourself a palette. I'm just doing it all on me um, on here because I've got a limited area that you can see close up. So I'll dry that quickly. Say hello to Dawn and to Jane, Lucy. Dawn and Jane, even Dawn and Jane. Enid. Enid. Hello, Nikki. Nikki. Good Nikki. to have you. Is it Nikki? 
You saw Nikki. You saw Nikki. Hi, Gigi Roberts. And we have Sheila has joined us tonight and Millie. Cool. Jan and Mandy. Actually, Sheila, we've got quite a few new people on tonight. Really? Could I ask you to explain what Sheena's in Kets is about sure. and how it's going to benefit those people? Yes. Our free so Facebook group. I'll paint and explain. Yes. So Sheena's in Kets is a, is a group that you would ask to join. And we keep it as a group because the reason is, you know, you can't you can't control all the nasty out there. And there are some nasty with, you know, out in the world at the minute and on Facebook especially. But we can keep it nice and keep it supportive and keep it friendly and keep it as it should be, all about crafting, all about supporting each other and about learning. And and that's what the Inkets is about. So when you, it's a group, so what you would do is you'd um, ask to join. There's a, three questions, just to make sure that, you know, you are like a real person for a start and you want to join for the right reasons. And we then let you in and that's it. And we let you in with the understanding that you're going to adhere to that, be nice, be nice or... See, yeah, that's basically it, Maria, isn't it? And yeah. in there is a whole bank, a wealth of information, of knowledge. All the all the, the cards that you'll see on the shows, every show, are held there. They're not they're not lost. They're all there for when you get your your um, purchases, when you get your stuff, you know, it arrives. You think, oh, can't remember now because I can't watch it back. What's going on? All the cards are there, and the team, the inkets. That's where they all hang out. So if you want to know how to do something, how you how to uh, make a particular card, you just ask them. And they're there, and that's what they love to do. They're part of the whole thing. Is they're not there just saying, look how cool we are. They want to share the techniques and the, and the, and the things that they've learned. That's, that's what it's all about. And then um, there's tutorials. If this was a, you know, a, a bank of video tutorials, we could... You know, people usually charge for the amount of information, I'll be honest, that's on there, because it's, it is vast, it's plentiful. So can you see how that has now transformed that by just that little bit of colouring in? Um, and so big tip is when they're still damp, when it's still wet, get your card and start moving it around, because flowers don't grow flat. And if they die, you, you want to make them look like they've got some dimension so just there's no special tools here just use your fingers and i'm just tweaking them and moving them around and i'm getting some articulation some movement in that look at how much better that one looks to the old those two can you see that mm -hmm. so i'm going to do that with all of them i mean you can snip there if you want and um, don't be scared to think oh should i, should I get this in there absolutely they your dies, tweak, cut bits off, cut bits. If you if this is a good store, but you don't want those flowers on them, just cut the, cut the things off. And, you know, you have to get little extra flowers to stick somewhere else um, for another project. Absolutely, just play with them. Get them working for you. And definitely get them moving. Get them so that they look like they're, they're of the 3D world. Are you all good, Maria? All good. Thank you, Kath. Yes. Kath just bought them as well. Sheena, we're not going to have to get out of bed in the morning. Oh, that'd be lovely. Yeah, they no shows nice. tomorrow. Imagine. <laughs> oh, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Um, no, I still like the shows, but you know, you, this is where Facebook Lives are absolutely, they, they win. I mean, I've got to be honest, the, the guys, I've already spoken to my producer, Laura, she's lovely. Laura's been there a long time. And um, we've already got a plan, and it, it's going to be, I think it's Nigel tomorrow morning, he's going to introduce the stuff, and then they're just handing over to me. So since we've been doing Zoom, the amount of faith they've got in me, bless them, is, um, is, is amazing. So the only time I have them back is when I need to tidy up a bit like and do stuff like that. So can you say, let me let me wipe these off for you. And they know that's what you want to see. You're only, you're only going to chip in if it's essential. And last show it was important because everything was going super, super fast. So that's how you're going to colour the, the bluebells. And uh, hopefully you like that. Um, and that, that was that quick one, that quick sip. And I'd encourage you to record the shows, even if you're not buying anything, um, because the tips that Sheena gives you during the shows are great for you using any dyes and stamps and stuff. So Absolutely. It's all a learning process, and that's what we like best, really, is oh. teaching, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, that, did you see I threw the royal we in, then? Well, it is, but it's a key. <laughs> I've, I've got it, but seriously, uh, I couldn't do this if it wasn't for Maria helping me to do this, and I couldn't do it, honestly. Um, without Maria 
and Debbie and the team. <laughs> you know, you there be no sheener. Not, not less of me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, absolutely. So, look at how we've got these autumn coloured leaves there. Um, that was fun. I've got to be honest. That was really good fun to do. And I think they look pretty authentic, don't you, Maria? Yeah, I think they're stunning. Back to that. So, I'm going to show you that. This is all just a little masterclass in colouring. I'm going to show you how to put the cards together, which you've done before. Um, but focusing on this. So, first thing I'm going to think, what colours am I using? Remember I said warm and cold? Well, I want warm because it's gold and it's autumn, isn't it? I'm going to use some of that red, not the pink. Pinky red would be the wrong red. So I'm going to use that crimson. I'm going to use gold. I'm going to use the sap green. And I'm going to use some of that grey because what makes a massive difference is if you can see here, can you see where there's little kind of um, bits of shading here and towards the base? That makes your, your colouring, your, your items look so much more realistic. And when you tuck them all in together, it emphasises the shadow where the light wouldn't be when they were growing naturally. So I'm going to just wet this lightly, just like that. Now I could use, in fact, I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm going to go up to, look at that brush. I'm number 12 in the basic brushes, what? So I'm going to wet it, not too much. And that's going to allow the paint to move really easily. And I'm going to pick some of this gold up and I'm going to start splodging randomly with gold. Try to be a bit random here because they don't turn all the same kind of uh, place so that when, they're, when they're changing colour. I'm going to take some of the red, pop that in there. You're welcome, Alexis. She says thank you so much. She's learning so much. Great. Cheers. Thank you. That's what it's all about. That's what we love, Maria, isn't it? We were talking about that and what bit of my job I like most and it's absolutely this this is what because in all honesty I couldn't I couldn't promote things I couldn't say to you guys you know go for this spend your money without thinking I've done my best to explain to you why because I wouldn't want to be bought by and just on pure faith I want it I want it explained simple as that so bring on the workshops oh yeah we definitely want to do that we're thinking of a competition, just having a competition. Yeah. Right, we're going to have a competition. Now, here's the good thing about lockdown. You know, with workshops when we're back on the road, you pretty much have to be in the vicinity, you know, at least on the continent, don't you? So all these lovely people in America, um, all the, the fabulous regulars we've got, you're not going to get to do the workshop. Um, however, we have, remember when I did that little one-to-one -one with Maddie yes. on Sunday, just a family thing, you know, just like, oh, we're colouring together. Because uh, being like, what, a two-hour drive away mm -hmm. and not able to be there in person. And um, we did that. And she said, wow, I love that. That was brilliant. So I said, do you think that would be a good thing to offer as a prize, maybe, a one-to-one? -one? So all you need is you need your phone and that's it, wherever you are in the world. So this would be open to anybody, wherever you are. So you're not, not if you're safe. And we could have a one-to-one -one tutorial, maybe an hour, an hour and a half tutorial. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be to buy anything. It'll be a, a, a free, you know, thing. Um, we'll work out what the competition can be. If there's a competition, if we're going to just make it a random factor. And um, I think we've got a little bit of brown in there as well. Why not? Put that orangey brown. Just, just have fun. Just pop a little bit of colour in. Just drop them in. And that's how you're going to get that authentic autumnal vibe. So if you like that idea, if you're thinking, so again, if it was America, we can accommodate on time so you don't have to be in the middle of the night and um, and do that. Because that's something that you, we can do in lockdown, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So try that. Hello to Mary Nash and Sue Tinson, Wendy Coombs, Irene Patterson. Marina Hopkinson, Jackie Weatherstone. My goodness. Oh, even and all. Hello, so, Pat Bailey. So here's the thing. Um, you'll notice that it looks, when it's wet, it looks dark. And watercolours do, but what's happened is what I said would happen. That grey has wicked into those little veins. And look how it's really emphasised. To think there's no stamp note, I'm so pleased that, you know, I hope we're making these for me. These are, these are just amazing. Because what they don't know about dyes, you don't want to know. They're, they've got it sorted. So if you want this stronger, 
You can go ahead and just pop a little bit more colour in places or just where you'd want and then let it be as the fab fall would say. And it's only in my head, I'm not going to sing it yet. Well, Catherine says, where's the singing? There you go. And so, well, we might get to it. I'm being sensible at the minute. You know, Ooh. I know. And if there's Why? so many new people, I don't know, me. it's not me. I'm feeling a bit, you know, not myself, am I? So that's the one we just painted. These are the ones we made earlier. That's how you're going to paint the autumn leaves. So you could do a whole card just like that. Um, let me show you some others that I've got here. I have been painting a Cherry Blossom-esque little collection. So if you imagine, um, let me put some base foliage down. I've got lots of bits cut out now over here. So if you imagine, well, it wouldn't be ferns, would it? Leaves, let me see. Lots of little leafy bits. I'm just playing here. And then you want a little cluster of uh, these little guys here were cut out to make it look like cherry blossom. Like, oh, ain't it pretty? Oh. And then have more. So again, um, if you don't want to go to card making jail or flower arranging jail, remember it's got to be odd numbers. People will be like freaking out of it and don't want to do that to them. So if you want to paint that, um, I'm going to show you then. Um, hi Sue, now, hi Inra and hi Petal. And if you are, perfect time in Petal, because look. Hello Petal. Hello Petal. So there you go, the larger ones, the smaller ones, depending on how big or small you want to make them. Slightly different colour tones there. And what looks nice is these obviously are going to be moving you're going to be got a little bit of articulation now or a bit like that what looks nice is if you don't make it too symmetrical because nature's not that you know oh it's a bit random in it and then we can see a little bit there and look at how pretty that would be on the frame we'll play around with these in a minute but let me show you quickly how we'll do we'll do a bigger one with there we'll do a couple of big ones for that um, actually, to do it, we'll do two colour tones there. Uh, warmer pink and a cooler pink. So the cooler pink is basically this rose, this rose. Well, the class it is a red, but it's kind of it's like a pink, isn't it? But it's very strong, very intense. And now what I'm going to do is I'm watering this down a lot. And bear in mind, watercolours do dry lighter. So, But I do want these to look like there's barely any colour there it's just a tint of colour so I've watered it down considerably if you think you've got you should have watered it down a bit more just get your paper and you can blot it okay now that's enough colour on there for blossom but look at what's happened again look at where it's caught in all those little bits cool now the other one to make that a little bit I've got ruby fingers on there as well a little bit warm I'm taking a touch of that crimson but not much just a tiny little bit and I'm going to use that so can you'll be able to see the difference. Big tip as well, when you use the watercolours, good quality watercolours, and I started to say earlier what makes a good quality watercolour, it's the intensity of the pigment. It's the amount of, the can, when you get your kids watercolours or your, or your less expensive or less artist quality watercolours, you don't have to go for an artist quality, but like a, you know, a, a, a bargain brand watercolour. It looks great in the little things until you start using them. And then when you use them, you go, who stole the colour? That's because these little pots are made of, there should be just a couple of things, powdered pigment and a binder. And the binder is the stuff that makes them stick to your card. So gloopy stuff. Now, the inexpensive ones have got extra stuff in there, which they call fillers, which bulks them up. So instead of being 100% colour, there may be... 80%, 20%, 50-50 colour. So when you water by the water, it the colour disappears. So that's where it's sometimes false economy because the really good stuff you're using... Um, I'm on this camera now. You are. Oh, thank you. Um, it, it disappears because then you're using um, more of it and you still look at the intensity of colour and your card soak and then what's going on? It's the quality of the, of the watercolours. So the other thing that it that makes is important, and less for card making, but still important, is how light fast they are. So normally, with the with the better quality, you get better light fast readings, which means that when the light hits them, and light will, even if you're, you know, in the north of England, the light still gets there. Um, it will 
lighten the colours eventually, okay? And that depends. That could be a matter of, seriously, with dye-based products I've used before, it's been overnight in the studio. Couldn't believe it. But um, so all I've done is add a little bit of more intense original colour there, and then I've put a little bit of water and it's wicked it out a little bit. And it looks very painty and quite watercolour, and that's exactly what I want. And I'm going to do the same, just a little dot around the middle, like that. This huge brush again. Send a little bit out. Wet the brush. Um, and that is that is huge. Now, four cards, you know, um, it, you may be thinking, well, you know, I don't need it to last 100 years. But you want it to last at least a, a year or two, you know, sometimes. Especially if you're going to be doing something for wall art now. Um and that, that's why you want better quality. So I'm going to pop a touch of this green, just a tiny touch, just in the centre there, like that. And then I might pop a little bit of a dry there now. Could you give us a quick get well soon to Kath Huxtable, please? You've got tonsillitis, bless her. Uh, oh, I had a terrible bout, didn't I, Maria? Was it last year, the year before? Oh, yeah, 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 it was great though. You couldn't talk. I couldn't talk? What? Seriously, who am I? Oh, I feel for your pet. I hope you can talk. Oh, it was terrible. It went to somebody else, didn't it? And it was nearly, yeah, nearly a hospital job. It was so, it was really bad. Um, so I feel for you. Oh, yuck. It's terrible. So what I'm doing, I'm taking a stronger version of that pinky colour and I'm doing a few little dots around here. And this could look like, you know, the little, the little polleny bits that come out mm -hmm. from the flower. And it gives it a bit more of a realism. Cathy France has got a question for you, please. Yes. Um, she has watercolours by Kuritaki, if that's yeah. how you say it. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think of them? I haven't used them personally, but I know a lot of people like them. They, they do the, the, the gan, the tam, the I don't know what they're called, but, they're, but they're like it. they use a different binder in their watercolours, and they're a lot more opaque than their traditional watercolours, but that's not a bad thing. But they get a great review. I haven't personally used them, so I can't see. But I know they get good reviews. Amanda, teamy Amanda, says that she uses them. She loves them. There you go. There you go. So this is where you go on joining kits because what I didn't use, chances are the team because we're all pretty much obsessive like each other about buying stuff like you, trying it out like you. Um, um, of which camera are you on, Maria? You're on the overhead. Okay, brilliant. So what I'm doing now, while this is still wet, move these little petals, get them going and move it. And don't be scared to snip in if you want a little bit more movement, but it's important, while it's still wet, get some some movement on them because that's now become like papier mache. The fibres are pliable, they're, they're more willing, and what will dry what will happen is when they dry they'll stick, they'll stay like that. You'll find they're really quite durable, they're really quite robust once they've set, once they've been wet and they've set like that. And then when you pop them together you're going to get a much better a uh, more realistic little uh, display of the colours. So you can see the two of the colours there. That being said, let me show you. Oh, I've got to show you the trees. You like the trees. Uh, trees are cool. So um, let me show you a quick way of doing the flowers and the trees. So what would make it quicker, would it not, would be if you had a base colour. So if you already had some colour laid down and then you do the extra details. So... Big brush, get your colours. So if I'm going to think of flower colours here, I'm going to use the other thing important with watercolours, two water containers. I've got a huge one here and I've got my teapot here. I'm supposed to keep one as dirty water and one as clean water and sometimes I forget and they get mixed up. So the teapot's dirty water at the minute, this one is clean water. And what I'm doing is it's important to um, to keep the water clean because you know it doesn't take much in watercolours to contaminate, especially if you've used a blue and anyone who's yellow, you're going to get green, aren't you? So wash over the surface of your card. This is where the big flat brush is. That's what they're there for. They set, but I'm putting colours. So what I'm doing is I'm using this yellow here, and I'm going to say we'll have a yellowy maybe patch here. We'll have some nice yellowy flowers if I want up there. I um, might then go to the goldy kind of colour there. See how that's still that colour is because I didn't dilute it. So make sure you spread it out over your card. And then we might go from gold. Remember gold goes as a warm colour. We'll go to that orangey red here. You don't have to be silver. I don't need help. Gillian Adams would like to know what card are you using? Please? I'm using Willow. 
white willow cord, a little watercolour card's great as well. Card's really important when you're doing this because you want a good quality card that's going to stand this much water. Because if you want intense colour, you need to really wet the card and you want it to blend and you really need to put it through its pieces. So, you'll, yeah, it's what you want. Um, it's 280 gram DSM and um, it's... Uh, it's got no low chalk content, which means it's great for blending. Um, let me throw that blue there. Um, blending with your inks and things, you know, with your applicator. It goes, it smooths across the surface. You're going to get a really nice uh, blend with it instead of it grabbing the colour. Now, can you see how I've gone from, from warm to cool, but I've had the right transition in between? So what I'm doing now, so this is going to be here at more bluey. And then I'm going to pop a little bit more pinky up here, just intensify that colour. And then what I'm going to do, if I think, well, I haven't blended as much as I wanted, my secret weapon, my bit of old kitchen sponge. You see, I, I may have to retire this one and not get a new one, so I'll probably show myself up. So you've wet it with hardly any water in it, and then you can just gently start pouncing. And what will happen is you start marbling and mixing these colours in a little bit. So can you see how now I've got that much more interesting transition from one to the next. I can see the rainbow. Oh, she can see the rainbow. See the rainbow. See the rainbow too. Oh, bless her. There's no harm in Thank you, there. Mary. She put me up to that. Did she? Yeah. Ah, uh, didn't take much encouragement, Mary. <laughs> so what you do then, you let me go, right, I'm going to dry that. So let me put that to one side. See how easy that is? So you don't need lots and lots of fancy stuff. You just need a good set of good stuff. And you can do all those backgrounds. I could put a bit of mica product in there. I could put my gold powders in there with a little bit of glue over it and have blingy flowers if I want. But you're going to dry that. I'm not going to dry it in a minute because I've got the one I did earlier. I'm just going to look for somewhere to put it. Oh, I'm going to pop that there beside you. Red and, and yellow and, and pink and, and yes, green. I did earlier. Orange and purple and blue. Bless that. So here's what I did earlier. And you can see what I've done. Look, I've used my dice and I've targeted different places to cut them out. So I've got already coloured base for all of these colours. I'm just going to show you. So you get your, with this being florally colours, I say, right, I'm going to have those there orangey. I'm going to pop that there, but use this, use the colour. Get your red tape on there. Use every bit you can. Don't waste it because you've, you've coloured it. So use every bit you can. I'm going to pop that there. This is obviously bluebells. I wanted you this. You could have that lilac uh, freeze. That one can go, as you can see, I've used it there. I might fit that in there. Yep, I'll get another one out of there. And pop them in where you want them. Pop all your flowers that you've got in there. Pop them, get them, get them working for you on your background. Tape them down, cut them out. And that's what I've done. That's where the holes are, as you can see I've done earlier. And what you get then is a fabulous base that looks cool as it is, or you can then start adding some detail to it. And I've done the same with the tree, by the way. There you go. Tree. So you see I've gone to a bluey green, so I've put more blue in one side, you put brown in there, you can have it more yellowy, and just transition it. And you've got cards now ready that are your cutting cards. This is a clean-up one, so this is going to be more muted. So this was the you know, direct bit, the stuff that was on there. Spritz it and pick it up on your card. Don't waste it. A little bit more colour if you need to, and you've got three sheets now. Four, a fabulous card that you can you can use. Right, that's that. So let me show you a pattern of tree and another little tip. So this sets dies and stamps, isn't it? It's the big stamps. Let me show you again. So we will just join big stamps. So there's no corresponding stamps with the dies this time because the details all there, Maria. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. for you to colour. These are all about colour. You colour them paper if you want, the backing papers. And then you've got your dies. So there are your dies. But you've seen how much detail is in all of the dies. You've seen all that that's already there. So you really don't need the stamp, to be honest, for those ones. And it was about using these with the other elements that you've already got at home as well. Right, so I've got a tree over there, a um, uh, craft card tree. And they're all coloured, but let's do a different one. I think I had a one bear with. I've got a, 
I've got some trees here. Right, let me show you how we can colour these trees in. We'll do a cut, we'll do three trees. The craft card ones I'll be doing on one of the shows tomorrow. Either the first or the second, depends. And um, they look great. Pamela's card looks fabulous. You'll see that one tomorrow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this a base colour. Now the base colour, you could use your applicator. You could, um, just to get it on quickly, but you know what, I'm just going to, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do, look at this, look at that, I'm not messing around here, where do I put my paints, yeah, I'm going to just put this on here, I'm going to pick that sap green, take some out, I'm just going to brush it on, right, done, jobs are good, and that's all I need right now, fabulous, next, so it's kind of a mid-green, that's going on there. Quite quite a strong colour. Put it on there. Lovely jubbly. Next. How about well for time, Maria? Yeah, we're we good. Now, haven't we? Mm. Wow. Okay, next one there. So we'll go till about half past lovelies because I've got to then tidy up and get ready for tomorrow morning. Um, and then I'm going to take a bit of brown. Again, no skill required. And that's going to go on there. Hi, okay. Rebecca. Okay, that will do. There's a base colour on there. Use a bit of dark brown on that one. That, 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 a bit of grey, actually. It doesn't matter. It matters not because we're not done with it. And that way. Right, fabulous. Oh, I'll tell you what, should we share our, should we share our experience today, Maria? Well, how pathetic were we today, Maria? How girly. How much <laughs> we let the blinking side down today, Maria. We did. So here's the thing, right? You know what to tell you about you and we're shopping like you, are we not, Maria? We are. And the you know the storage company on uh, creating craft, the fabulous things with storage the for crafts, I think it's yes, called. Yes, you know, we look at those massive Inspector gadgets. Room in the cupboard. Love it. <laughs> One day we may do that as well. But uh, considering on the performance we did today. You know the tall stacking one. I'm on the front camera here, Maria, with the thing. Uh, your front camera now. The tall stacking one, amazing with all those trees. You can get the trees out of the boxes. We got that for all of Maria's acrylic paints, to be honest, because they're bulky and those things. So we got this, and obviously because it's like they say anybody can pigeon could probably learn it if they put master a screwdriver. We should be fine, are we not? Well, we're not stupid. We can do it. Except we couldn't. It came. And it has screws. I've seen screws before. Know how they go, right? Hello, Philip's head. I'm there. I can work out the difference between the flat head and screw. Can't you? However, they had these other funky things in that were like round disc things that fit in a bit. And then there's another thing that goes in that bit. Could we hell figure it out? Seriously? And we had to phone, didn't we? Phoned. We had to phone. Thank you, Steve. We were a couple of couple of numpties, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. Pathetic. But a big thumbs up to Steve. Yes, yeah, Steve. Customer it's service. Now, Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. How pathetic is that? Really? Yeah. It really is easy. We knew how to do it all along, we really, Tina, you know, but we just thought maybe he was bored and needed something to do, so just we got him to answer the phone. I wanted to chat. Yeah. And he's a very nice guy, Steve. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. After we got all the laughing and how pathetic we were. Right, so I'm going to try these quickly. So I notice you're drawing those front and back. back. Yeah, when you when you draw your nose bit, obviously the moisture wicks to the opposite side of the card, and that's what makes the card twisty turn sometimes, so it flattens it out a lot of the time. Plus it dries it quicker. Okay. Right, now they're not looking that impressive at the minute. However, we have a plan. And the plan is the fan brush. Okay. Dun, so dun, 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 dun. Sid, Sid Vicious. Yeah, Mohawk back in the day. <laughs> no foul language, mister. Right, so that's him. Right, so I'm going to wet it a little bit and I'm going to take some of my sap green. This is from your technique brushes. Techniques, and they're still in stock, if you're quick. <laughs> Definitely, the other ones aren't in stock. Sorry, we're going to have to wait till they come back in. So that there. And then, let's do it on the big one to start with. I'm going to. Hi Dorothy, Margaret, Ian. Start pouncing. And hello Marie. Okay, 
sound room. So you want that to fan out a little bit and go sideways like this. So it kind of like represents the little, the little the way that the branches are forming, like those shells of branches. And if you want a darker on one side, that's cool. If you this is it's much more defined when you use acrylics, but you can still do it with watercolors. It's a much softer fan brush when you do it this way, or oils, but you still can get that texture look already. Look at the difference with that and that. Okay, but we're not done. I'm gonna do the all of this one and then you just repeat, okay? So we can go darker this time. So I'm gonna go with a, um, a little bit blue in there. I'm gonna use that marine blue. Whoa, it's very dark, isn't that? Might be too dark, but we'll see. It should be more of a piney color when we get that in there, yeah. VG's joined us. Hi, VG. Hi, VG. Hope you're well. Yeah. So what I'm doing as well is I'm making it a little bit darker on one side, just catching that left side a bit more. So you just flick it with the fan brush. But see how much texture it's adding? It looks like it's got something going on, isn't it? That's lovely. Right, so that's there. And then we can get really brave. If you, bear in mind, if this is wet, when you put the next colour on it, it'll just merge. You'll lose the texture. And you need to use it. The colour's quite strong. But I'm going to use a bit of that grey. Um, I have to like, I put those uh, trees I've painted. Oh, I'll put them somewhere there. I'll have to show you maybe tomorrow. <clears throat> um, I'm going to use the Payne's grey. Oh, this is not actually. It's the neutral tone. Similar stuff. There's some at the side of you there. Top left of your glass mat. Trees. No, I was the ones I'd painted, like the, the Christmas trees using the fan brush that I was going to show, and then we didn't get them ah, to. Okay, that, yes, that, yes. That pile over there, I think, Maria. But, okay. So this one. So now we're going darker again, and a little bit lighter, so I'm just adding a little bit of water, and it gives that impression of shadow and darker at the base. So that there has got lots of texture in it, has it not? And then we can do the same with the, this here, the trunk. We can darken it a little bit. And then we'll add a little bit of that grey to that one side. And then we'll dry that and we'll show you the how it looks from one to the other. Let me dry that up here and then we'll get a little bit of the white cloth on it. So this could be a great Christmas tree. Fabulous little winter scene. But it's nice to have that medium green then a bit darker and then you go bluey green if you want and then the grey colour. The grey makes a massive difference. Let me dry this. Hello Jeanette Fairhead. Alison says Willow's been very quiet recently. She has, yeah. but that delivery is due, so anything could happen in the next half hour, as we'll see on Friday. So, right, let me get this black card in. So this was the just the green on it, yeah? That's what we've got there, just that wash. Right in shot? Yes. Great. And there's a little baby one, so you've got perspective. From that, now we did, we've got that. So, so much, much different, more, isn't yeah, it? absolutely. So what we can do now... 3D is, trees. Uh, yeah, and it's just with your technique brushes. Um, and obviously you know how we do, we've painted this background a lot of the times so with the technique brushes, the flowers, haven't we? If you haven't seen that, look back to previous um, Facebook Lives, all these I've done with the same fan brush. Um, and when I show you the, the Christmas trees I was painting in a similar fashion, using that brush... So we'll pop just a touch of the wash or goulash, as Dan likes to call it. Bless her now, feeding the lad enough, are they? Goulash. <laughs> <laughs> it's always goulash now. Always there. And we're going to pick up a little bit of this. Now, if this was winter, you would have it more white, so less diluted. But if you want it just to look like a summer day and it's catching a little bit of highlight on this side, um, less white. Magdalene says, thank you for the tuition. She's new to painting, so it's really helpful. Oh, cool. Well, that's what we love. That's what we like to do. Simplify it and show you the little tips that I've picked up. And, and um, 
yeah, it's just when you learn a couple of bits, it's like, wow, that's easier. And then what we've got now is you can see it looks like it's got much more light. See where the light and the shadow is more apparent there and that. Um, and then we'll shape it a little bit, dry it a little bit, shape it, and then we'll show you a couple of the bits and pieces we've got. And then um, and that's a pretty good little tutorial ahead of tomorrow, don't you think? Absolutely. I thought it was more useful. Oh, I'll show you those batteries as well. So, dry it a bit, and then again, you can still try and form it a little bit to um, give it a little bit of movement. Just I'm just bending it around to dorm it slightly, and then just bring some little bits out, you know. Some bits back, oh, some bits forward. When I was active then, give you a bit of a jolt, she did. Is she? Make you jump. Yeah, please jump. Yeah, I make that Catherine Tate character, the one I scream when the toaster pops up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous disposition. <laughs> Not Nan. Is that the lady that does Nan, Catherine oh, Tate? Oh, yeah, we love Nan. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I never get tired of watching Nan. Oh, if there's anybody across the pond, just look up on YouTube. Catherine Tate and Nan, she's brilliant. Right, so. Hello, darling. Come and see me. You can't see me, can you? Yeah, well, you can't see me, didn't you? Oh, sit down. It's a bit potty mode, yeah. Nan, isn't it? Oh, I'm not going to go there, no, Sheila. Don't go there. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit worried. Okay, so, now, there. See how much more 3D that looks? That's your tree, and um, jolly good fun to do too. Right, so that's that. Let me show you. These are the little trees I did. It's a little Christmas tree. I did a little tree. <coughs> and you stand to in the fan brush in that <coughs> kind of Alison that Garrett, that's your fault. <coughs> we'll do that another Facebook Live one day if you like the look of it. And then I just did a solo tree. With a nice little bit of um, different colour, just tap it on with the with the same brush, and um, and then a little bit of stickles, and it's a little pretty base for a Christmas card uh, with your wording or whatever. You can put whatever feature stamps you have in the foreground. So that's the tree. So let me show you how this comes together. Was that the Amazon only? Yes, that was Mr. Amazon. Uh, I tell you what, the cardboard boxes that you can end up with, dearie, dearie me. There'll be dogs barking all around the USA yeah, and yeah. all throughout the yeah, UK. Well, no, <laughs> right, so I'm going to, uh, that's all the little bits and pieces. Let me show you how they all come together. I have a card prepared here, which I'm not going to um, stick together because I can use it again tomorrow, to be honest. And you can see it on the overhead. So big tip, stamp your stamp I've like to stamp and emboss it and then it makes it really shiny and bright and obviously use your position I use the load and fold which is fantastic pop your die over it in this case it would be I'm going to go on the top with it no sir Bob be that one and then you're going to cut it out now you're going to end up with it's not exactly the same so it'll be better in that way you're going to get a frame as well when you cut this out so do I have the right baby form Oh, you know what? I'm not going to do it so either. <laughs> oh, anyway, you get the idea. You cut it out, and then you'll end up with a frame as well, which will not come to we will not be wasted when you're a frame. And you can colour that in later for another project. Yeah? And then, you've got that ready. Then cut the frame out again in gold, and then this is going to sit... Let's hope I've got the right way around in there, like that. Now you can ink it up, you can do some nice pretty stuff like a man has done at the background. But as the time's marching on, I'm going to leave that for another demonstration, maybe do something tomorrow with that. And then you can start playing with putting your bits and pieces around the outside. So we can have a bit of fern around there, like that, and another bit of fern. Oh, I've got another bit coloured. Um, got a tip with the um, gouache, um, with the white... Um, gouache as well that is 
ordinary ink on craft card. That shouldn't show up like that. I've got a trick and a trick I'm going to show you, but I'll show you another time. That'll go there. I sound terrible just teasing you over that, but... You're going to show it tomorrow? My show, I've got time, yeah. There's just always so much to get through on the shows, isn't there? So yeah. Much so you can pop a little bit in there, a little bit in there, a little bit down there if you want, and we'll pop a little one of the bigger flowers there. You see how you're building it up? We'll pop some bluebells maybe around here and maybe about there. It's like a little wild little forage around the countryside in a cord. That red or gypsophilia type thing. I've got another bit of gypsophilia, I don't know where I've put it. Not coloured, right? I'll just put Or gypsophila, depending on where you come from. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, it's like Debbie Durant or Deborah Durant. Depending on where you come from. Right? So we'll pop that there. And um, then a little flowers, you can put some more flowers, smaller ones maybe in there. Royson says, what size is your card, please? No idea. <laughs> That's not helpful, it. is it? Let's do, let's, well, let me do this and I'll measure it for you on, on your mat as best I can. It's, it, yeah, there's inches up there. Right, I'll come back to you on that one. Um, and then, with, where's the ultimate here? Yeah, these ultimate leaves we need to put them. We've gone, I've got full on colour here, as you can see. I'm not holding back on colour. But you don't have to, you can just go for it, can you not? Mm -hmm. Um the autumn leaf down here. I'm gonna put another little flower there, a little smaller one there. It's tucked in. And then we can pop these little leafy bits here. Oh, a couple of these in there, that'd be nice there. Or in there maybe, da da da, um, maybe these little leafy bits down there. So you see how you're, you're trying different different things out in different places, but you know, don't stick them until you know you've got them where you want them. If you do this and you think, oh, I like that, but I'll never remember, and how am I going to stick them there? Get your phone out, take a picture, then take them all off and then stick to what look at your phone and stick, stick them what, after you've looked at your picture on your phone, and then you'll remember where. Where to go. Makes sense to me. Um, put that one in there. So I've enjoyed that. I hope you have. Thank you for for tolerating us. And um, we've got some people that have joined us um, a little bit towards the end here. So I would say that we'll be posting this directly after we uh, push the end button. Yes. So it'll be going straight to. to yeah. Straight yeah. to this page and straight to Sheena's in Kets group. Um, so you'll be able to see it on there in its entirety. Fabulous. So that the card size is in inches, it's about eight and a half inches by six inches. So really you just want enough around it. Oh, coming off, look at that one. Fine. They're all just it's just you can make it smaller just to fit the dimension of that oval. Um, and that's basically it. So I hope you have enjoyed that, lovely people. And um, and oh, you're on that one now. All right, you can tell me. See, on this thing, I've got. I can look at myself, and I know when I'm on the overhead on that. And on the when you're in the studio, it's lights and the cameras. You know, oh, you, know. you do that. Your hand, your hand is massive. massive. Oh. Hands that do dishes can feel soft as your face. Mouth green, fairy liquid, liquid, liquid. You know, I didn't show you those things that come out, didn't I? Those are that Let me show you, I forgot. They showed you that sheet of all the ones. Look, all these flowers came out of that sheet. So you've got all these different base colours that you can then tweak. Hi, Max. Right. All came out of that one pre-painted sheet that we did together. So look at how what a time saver that is. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Right, lovely. So I am now going to call that a night. And um it's a night. It is a night. And we will hopefully tune in tomorrow, 9 a.m. Uh, on this camera sir. Uh yeah now. Great. So um see at 9 a.m. bright and breezy. That's UK time. UK time. We're going to tidy everything up and um, 
Yes. See you then. Thanks for that. I had a lovely time and I hope that was useful for you. Um, let us know any comments if it is. And let us know what you think about that competition. If you think, oh, you're not safe globally now. <gasps> Only me. She knows. Don't want to walk. So long, farewell. I'll be to saying goodbye. Adieu, adieu, to you and you and you. Goodbye, goodbye. What's that? I just thought, goodbye. See you soon. Thanks for joining. Bye.